the Bard Appendiric Ode Tigre, an ancient storyteller anticipating his imminent end is decrying the defeat of his nation and heaps curses on the ruthless king who has done the evil deed. References are made to past and coming ruin and glories, depending on whose side you are on. The passions run high and low in Pindaric fashion until the dramatic end. The Bard, a Pindaric Ode Ruin sees thee, ruthless king, confusion on thy banners wait. Though fanned by conquest's crimson wing, they mock the air with idle state. Helm nor hauberk's twisted mail, nor e'en thy virtue's tyrant shall avail to save thy secret soul from nightly fears. From Cambria's curse, from Cambria's tears, such were the sounds that o'er the crested pride of the first Edward scattered wild dismay, as down the steep of Snowdon's shaggy side he wound with toilsome march his long array. Stout Gloucester stood aghast in speechless trance, to arms cried Mortimer, and couched his quivering lance. On a rock whose haughty brow frowns o'er old Conway's foaming flood, Robed in the sable garb of woe, with haggard eyes the poet stood. Loose his beard and hoary hair streamed like a meteor to the troubled air, and with a master's hand and prophet's fire struck the deep sorrows of his lyre. Hark, how each giant oak and desert cave sighs to the torrent's awful voice beneath. O'er thee, O king, their hundred arms they wave, Revenge on thee in hoarser murmurs breathe. <clears throat> Vocal no more since Cambria's fatal day, To high-born holes harp or soft Llewellyn's lay. Cold as Codwallow's tongue that hushed the stormy main, Brave Urien sleeps upon his craggy bed. Mountains ye mourn in vain, Modred, whose magic song made huge Philimlun bow his cloud-topped head. On dreary Ar Arban's shore they lie, smeared with gore and ghastly pale, far, far aloof the fright affrighted ravens sail. The famished eagle screams and passes by, dear lost companions of my tuneful art, dear is the light that visits these sad eyes, Dear as the ruddy drops that warm my heart, ye died amidst your dying country's cries. No more I weep, they do not sleep. On yonder cliffs a gracely band, I see them sit, they linger yet, avengers of their native land. With me in dreadful harmony they join and weave with bloody hands the tissue of thy line. Weave the warp and weave the woof, the winding sheet of Edward's race, give ample room and verge enough the characters of hell to trace. Mark the year and mark the night, when Severin shall re-echo with affright the shrieks of death through Berkeley's roofs that ring, shrieks of an agonizing king. She wolf of France with unrelenting fangs that tears the bowels of thy mangled mate. From thee be born, who o'er thy country hangs the scourge of heaven. What terrors round him wait? Amazement in his van with flight combined, And sorrow's faded form and solitude behind. Mighty victor, mighty lord, low on his funeral couch he lies. No pitying heart, no eye afford a tear to grace his, his obsequies. Is the sable warrior fled? Thy son is gone. He rests among the dead, the swarm that in thy noontide beam were born. Gone to salute the rising morn, fair laughs the morn, and soft the zephyr blows. While proudly riding o'er the azure realm, in gallant trim the gilded vessel goes. Youth on the prow and pleasure at the helm, regardless of the sweeping whirlwind sway that hushed in grim repose expects his evening prey. Fill, fill high 
the sparkling bowl the rich repast prepare. Reft of a crown, ye met me share the feast, close by the regal chair, fell thirst and famine scowl, a baleful smile upon their baffled guest. Heard ye the din of battle bray, lance to lance and horse to horse? Long years of havoc urged their destined course, and through the kindred squadrons mow their way. Ye towers of Julius, London's lasting shame, with many a foul and midnight murder fed, revere his concert's faith, his father's fame, and spare the meek usurper's holy head, above, below, the rows of snow, twinned with her blushing foe we spread, the bristle bore in infant gore, wallows beneath the thorny shade. Now, brothers, bending o'er the accursed loom, stamp we our vengeance deep and ratify his doom. Edward, lo, to sudden fate, weave we the wolf, the wolf, the thread is spun, half of thy heart we consecrate. The web is wove, the work is done. Stay, O oh stay, nor thus forlorn. Leave me unblessed, unpitied, here to mourn. In yon bright track that fires the western skies, they melt, they vanish from my eyes. But oh, what solemn scenes on Snowdon's height descending, slow their glittering skirts unroll. Visions of glory spare my aching sight, ye unborn ages. Crowd not on my soul. No more our long lost Arthur we bewail. All hail, ye genuine kings, Britannia's issue hail. Girt with many a barren bold, sublime their starry fronts they rear, and gorgeous dames and statesmen sold in bearded majesty appear. In the midst of form divine, her eye proclaims her of the Britain line. Her lion port, her awe-commanding face, a tempered sweet to virgin grace. What strings symphonious tremble in the air, what strains of vocal transport round her play. Here from the grave great tell its sin here, they breathe a soul to animate thy clay. Bright rapture calls, and soaring as she sings, waves in the eye of heaven her many-colored wings. The verse adorn again, fierce war and faithful love, and truth severe by fairy fiction dressed, in buskined measures moved, pale grief and pleasing pain with horror, tyrant of the throbbing breast. A voice as of the cherub choir gales from the blooming Eden bare, and distant warblings lessen on my ear, that lost in long futurity expire. Fond, impious man, thinks thou yon sanguine cloud, raised by thy breath, has quenched the orb of day. Tomorrow he repairs the golden flood, and warms the nation with nations with redoubled ray. Enough for me, with joy I see the different doom our fates assign. Be thine despair and sceptred care. To triumph and to die are mine. He spoke, and headlong from the mountain's height, deep in the roaring tide, he plunged to endless night. <laughs>